trying to overturn a world order. And I don't think that peace with Russia is possible. You know, I think that... Ever? Certainly for the time being. Um, you know, Russia sees itself in an existential conflict with the West. Welcome back to it, Explorer. I want to thank you for joining. I wanted to play a video about one of British leading military officers who basically failed, came on air on a BBC interview to suggest that there won't be peace with within the country of Russia and Europe. I find that stunning. Again, it goes back to what we have been saying on this channel and the reason why a lot of these strategic and geopolitical experts come on TV to send the wrong signal to a number of audiences around the world by this former British military commander, uh, leading military officer, to suggest that Europe cannot of any peace with the country of Russia, I think it's mistaken. It goes back to the the warmongering aspect that we've seen across uh, the geopolitical spectrum, as if Russia is the only country that's standing to go to war with the country of Ukraine and the West, and that the Western countries are not to an extent supporting Ukraine to stand against uh, Russia. Listen, this is going to stop. And it has to stop because there are a number of people dying on both sides in Russia and also in, in the country of Ukraine. And we continue to see how the build up on both sides are impacting the geopolitical spectrum. Now, for an experienced, seasoned military expert to come on TV to kind of suggest that there won't be any peace between Russia and the West. I mean, that's, that's really mistaken, that way I can put it, and it's shameful. Now, the military expert was pressed by the journalist for him to rephrase exactly what he was meant to say that there won't be any change, or are you talking about that the current president of Russia is leading? That's the reason why there won't be any peace. So he, he went back and doubled down on it. But again, the question here is, this country is being led by one of uh, the leaders that many in the West would consider to be a fool in geopolitical strategic operations around the world. Again, don't forget the country of Russia and the West have a long history of antagonism. If we look at during the communism and the capitalism moment, where in the continent of Africa and other regions in Cuba and around the world, these two your political blocks have been apart. So it's not something new. So what we are hearing from the commander, it's not something strange. But it goes back to, to, to look at why uh, this relationship, this war will continue. Because people like this continue to beat the drum war. And as we all see, the world is unstable at the moment. And for a very experienced professional to come on air and talk really what I consider as nonsense in regards to peace building and seeing that a country of Ukraine cannot in any way build, uh, look at, uh, I would say that if they cannot find peace with the country of Russia, then I think it's, it's ill-conceived. So let, let's roll the clip. Trying to overturn a world order. And I don't think that peace with Russia is possible. You know, I think that... Ever? Certainly for the time being. Um, you know, Russia sees itself in an existential conflict with the West. You know, Putin's aims are... When you say Russia, do you mean Russia or do you mean Putin? Putin's Russia. Right. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, I yeah. think Putin is a, is a product of Russian strategic culture. He's not the architect of it. And whatever follows Putin, um, we should assume will be just as difficult. Not necessarily as powerful, but just as difficult. Well, the next question that came was how this military officer perceived the world to have changed. Of course, the world has changed. And there's just too much insecurity with regards to the current global conflict that we all see. But from that particular expert's own knowledge, this has been caused as a result of the countries of the global south or what he called the Axis countries, talking about China, Russia, Iran, uh, North Korea, 
um, South Africa and a number of other countries that are forming this BRICS block sort of point out. According to him, the system should stay the same way it has been for many years. But that's not going to work because global South countries are beginning to speak out really clear that the financial system doesn't work, doesn't favor them. The current multilateral systems or multilateral institutions like United Nations and also World Bank and International Monetary Fund does not work for the benefits of those countries. And most recently, on the 79th session, we saw how African leaders came strong to condemn the United Nations uh, particular setting. This has been going on over and over. And for a high-ranking military officer to come on TV and say that the system that has been existing is about to be disrupted by the so-called Axis country, according to him, I think that is uh, disrespectful. I think this narrative of that it should favor the way we feel and not consider how the other countries that we deal with feel it's wrong. We have to look back to ourselves and consider that the world is not what it seems to be. Like, again, he said that the world doesn't seem to be what it used to be 25 years ago or 30 years ago. Things have moved. We have countries like China, and also other emerging nations like India coming up really strong economically and militarily. And these countries are expanding their sphere of influence. China, for example, Russia continue to engage the continent of Africa. We see how China is battling the U.S. in terms of geopolitical advantage in the continent of Africa. The U.S. at the moment is involved in a war between Israel and also uh, what's going on in, in Gaza. And the U.S. is struggling to see how they can calm things down with regards to the current geopolitical tension, Lebanon. And it's difficult for the United States to find out a solution. The Secretary Blinken continued to travel to Qatar, trying to look for means, talking to Egypt and regional countries to see where peace can come. This is not going to work because on one side there is a huge double standard and on the other side we try to talk about peace. So for a, a military officer of this caliber, a very high ranking official, to come on TV and think that these other countries who are fighting for their own citizens and for their own serve are the axis. This word of the axis of evil, we heard this during the Iraqi war period, uh, it's still coming back. So these are dividers. These are war beats, uh, drum beaters coming again to talk about the same things that divided the world um, during the Iraq war. And that as we all saw in the South China Sea, what's going on between Taiwan and China hasn't been resolved. We see what's happening in the Sudan, what's going on in that particular country, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Kivu area. We see what's happening. And now, in Russia and Ukraine. It's one of the conflict that Europe couldn't believe that this was going to be prolonged into this period. And for the world to sit and look on peace aspect, then we hear what's going on with the military officer coming and thinking and saying that these countries want to change the way of life or change the system. But I have news for you. The system is not working. And for us to continue to live together and interacting with these countries because their economies too are growing. They are having influence in a number of areas in terms of population and interaction. We have no choice to do business with these countries. We must stop this nonsense rhetoric of that uh, they are coming to disrupt the way the world works. Let's roll the clip and let's listen to what he has to say. Before we get into the specifics of what's going on in this conflict right now, I just want you to cast an eye back over your 40-year career and and give us an assessment of how unsafe the world feels now compared to previous periods in your career. So I've had an almost circular career because I joined at the latter stages of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. My first four years, five years were, were in the Cold War. And then we went through, you know, the, the end of history, if you like, if you believed Francis Fukuyama and that wonderful unipolar moment, which we really uh, frittered away. And now here we are back into a potential conflict, certainly a really, really serious competition with um, with great powers, you know, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, this, this axis, mm. if you like. 
And I think the world is as dangerous as I've known it, in some respects more dangerous than the Cold War, because the system, the, you know, that, the so-called international order, which kind of kept us safe, you know, had us in a period of extraordinary peace and prosperity for most of our lives, has ended. And we're reminded that, that actually that was almost unique in, in human history. Take the Russian experience between 900 and 1900. They only had one 25-year period of uninterrupted peace. Um, so war is normal. It is sadly part of the human condition. And um, we've now got these great powers, this axis of powers. The world is as dangerous as I've known it, in some respects more dangerous than the Cold War. The aspect of Ukraine, well, he kind of say Ukraine stood its grounds. Of course, no one will allow anybody to invade the country. If I was from Ukraine, I would defend uh, my own territorial integrity. Of course, that you have to fight. Russians too are engaging Ukraine. Ukrainians too are engaging Russia. We also what happened in the coast region. But the question here is: Is this the way forward? What is the end game with regards to this war? If I understand well, and other geopolitical analysts in the world will con confirm that every war ends on the table. It will end one day, and there will be peace to talk about these very important things that are relevant to the current society that we all live. So if we think that this is going to happen um, without any peace um, uh, countries coming to sit down and talk about peace in the future, then these experts are mistaken. You expect that Ukraine to stand up and fight for its nation, and that's the reason why. The only solution here, nobody's saying that Ukraine it's having a weak military or whatever. Ukraine is being supported by Western countries that to an extent um, it's also fighting for its own sovereignty. The Russians as well are seeking geopolitical partners in its own sphere of influence to prolong this war. We all saw what's happening uh, most recently in the news. You know, we talked about that military officers from North Korea are currently in Russia. And this is also going to prolong. This is gradually. Things are building up. We are getting to a nuclear event, uh, potentially, as expert we're talking about that this should have stopped so far, but no particular uh, effort is being made to call for peace. How do we get to this stage? That's the issue. Then listen to what he has to say with regards to how Ukraine is standing up to uh, the current situation in, uh, in Russia. Did you expect Ukraine to last this long? And no. that's the I mean, no one, no, no one did. In fact, most of the military planning that we were doing, because of course, we've been there since 2014. You know, we've, you know, we've had a presence in Ukraine. We've been working with them um, and trying to build up their capabilities. And uh, uh, we, we thought that it would be the Russian, or we overestimated the Russian army. Um, and there was a lot of hubris in, in how they conducted it. I think there was an arrogance, an assumption by uh, by the Russians that Ukraine would collapse, and of course they didn't. Um, so I don't think anyone really read just how um, how determined, how strong, how courageous, and how skillful the Ukrainians would be, particularly in those early weeks and months. I have to say that if you look at his rank, it was a top military officer who came on air to to suggest this kind of uh, uh, narrative that. With his, with his exposure, with his uh, military training, with his background, uh, I think that beating this war drum is it, an ill-conceived strategy, which I think at the end of the day, uh, we'll still expect Ukraine and Russia to come on the table because that is the only way forward. Nothing is going to happen. But for experts like this to come on TV and suggest considering their military background and their expertise and their amount of intelligence that they have seen to suggest in one way or the other that there is no end game in terms of peace with the country of Russia and Ukraine, I think that's foolish. Let's roll the clip. Sitting alongside us, we have General Sir Patrick Sanders, Chief of the General Staff, in other words, Head of the British Army between June 2022 and June this year. Patrick, welcome to our studio. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, obviously, you were high up, although not the head, 
of the British Army when the full-scale invasion broke out. What, what was that period like? What can you recall for our listeners around the world? So I was doing one of the other chief's jobs. I was in charge of uh, an organisation called Strategic Command, which is where we have all the intelligence, special forces, cyber, space capabilities and so on. Um, and that meant that I was seeing the intelligence build up, um, which was extraordinarily detailed and we, the, the only thing that we couldn't do was to draw a line between all of the forces that were building up and the planning that the Russians were doing and Putin's intent. And a lot of people misread Putin's intent, as we know. Yeah. Let us know what you think with regards to the current outing by the high-ranking British former officer with regards to his perspective on global events. And let us know what you think if, at the end of the day, the war between Russia and Ukraine will be on the table. Leave us a comment, watch other informative video on this YouTube channel. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day.